welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 211. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Sapphire Hot Song. Hi! I'm not a delusional pony at all. Hi! <laughs> Hello there. Uh, you sound tired. Yes. I don't like waking up early. I like waking up at like 2 a.m. in the afternoon. 2 a.m. in the afternoon? That's 2 p.m. TM, whatever. Either way, I don't like waking up early. <laughs> Alrighty then. And our guest for this week is the wonderful and amazing Manga Kamen. Greetings, citizens of the internet! Welcome to the new show. What new show? Well, I'm taking over, of course. What? <laughs> I, for one, welcome our new leader. <laughs> I, I am your overlord. Bow down before me. I did not agree to this. <laughs> Gotta read the fine print, baby. Gotta read the fine print. Well, it also says that you need to pay me ten thousand bucks beforehand. So yes. <laughs> But anyway, oh, darn, I'm out of deer. <laughs> How are you doing, man? I am doing superb on this wonderful morning. Ah,、uh, you're a morning person then. <laughs> That's good. So before we officially start, I need to ask you the four important questions. And question number one is, who's your favorite character? Well, my favorite character in show. Recently, the more one I like is actually Princess Ember, but I've always been a fan of Discord for the more well, pretty much. I'm going to tell you why they are a fan of Discord. He's zany, he's charismatic, and I'd be lying if I wasn't saying that I have a little bit of a bias thanks to Star Trek. Haha. <laughs> well, everybody has that bias against、um, Discord, so it's all cool. Not me. Really? I never grew up on Star Trek. But you don't like Discord. I never said I didn't like Discord. I just said I don't have the Star Trek the bias. Hmm. All right, you then. So why Discord or why Princess Ember at the same time too? For Discord, as I said, I kind of enjoy his charismatic personality. Plus, who doesn't love a little chaos every once in a while? And considering that the show is pretty much prim and proper most of the time, when it concerns like you know. Morals and that kind of thing. It's good to have a little bit of chaos in there. And as for Princess, and as for Princess Ember, I really like her design. It's good to see like a real blue character with a speaking role. And also cough, cough, Sunday. I saw your review. I know. Not gonna deny that. <laughs> all right, all right. So favorite episode? I really don't have much of a favorite episode. I basically just like the show as a whole, and. I don't really care for like best or worst episodes or favorite or least favorites. I mean, that's one of the reasons why you'll never see like a top five worst or best episodes on my channel ever. Because frankly, I like to judge the show on its whole and not just individual episodes. Hmm. All right. And yes, I did just sidestep that question. So what? <laughs> <laughs> It is a good sidestep. It's a good sidestep. So,、um, favorite episodes aside, so how did you become a fan of the show? Well, that's actually an interesting story. You see,、um, I guess in maybe around season two, I hadn't seen the show at all. I heard about it, but it wasn't really my cup of tea at the time. On the summer of the second season, I decided, you know what, I'm gonna go for broke, and I got myself a booth at an anime convention to sell artwork. As I was doing that, I managed to make like a lot of money selling my art, considering that I wasn't as good as I am nowadays. But One thing I noticed that when you're standing or sitting at the table, you notice all the cosplayers. And frankly, I kept on seeing characters with pink hair, rainbow-colored hair, people with wings and horns just walking about. And I'm like thinking, what? What is that from? Now this was an anime convention. I got to point out, so I was not expecting that. And I hadn't seen any anime that had characters with like slightly anthropomorphic features to them. So when I had a couple of the girls who were dressed up as Rainbow Dash and Flush, I come to my booth. I asked them, "I'm sorry, but what show is that from? I don't remember seeing characters like this." And the two just gave me this weird look, <laughs> like I was like, like I was on fire. And they said, "My Little Pony," and I'm just standing there with my jaw slacked. My Little Pony, because well, I did grow up with like the third generation, some of the second, along with the horrible movies. I never really gave it much thought at the time, because you know, 
boy. I always wanted to testosterone build things like Power Rangers and that kind of shtick. And so it was like a little surprise for me. So on the second day of the convention, I decided, you know what, I got some time. There's no one come to the booth for a little bit because they got like voice actors like Professor Oak's voice actor. So I look up a couple of the shows. Most recent one that came up on YouTube was the Discord episode <laughs> for season two. And hook, line, sinker. Oh no, they got you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was actually the cosplayers that got me interested in the show. Oh no, they got you if they're wild. <laughs> uh, the <Ooh>. temptresses. <laughs> but yeah, that, that's basically how I got into the show for the most part. <laughs> well, that's interesting. Um, this isn't first I heard from anyone uh, go to a con, an anime con to be exact. And got introduced to the show there. Hmm, alright. So, what do your family and friends think about your love for said show? Well, my friends, they really don't care. Most of them just go like, meh. My family is a little bit different because, for one thing, it wasn't until like last December when I posted my winter special that my mother found out that I actually did these kinds of videos. Mm -hmm. And that's rather embarrassing because now she watches my videos, so I gotta be careful what I say because I don't wanna get called up saying, How could you say that word? <laughs> oh wow. Uh, oh god. Yo, Vilka. As for my yeah. dad, as for my dad, he really, he's a little confused, but then again, he grew up watching Star Trek and had to deal with Trekkie, so he's used to that sort of thing. But he doesn't stop playfully jabbing at me, but <laughs> <laughs> I jab at him back. So it's a ah, yes. so right there. So ha did you tell your dad about John Delancey in as Discord? Yeah, but he's more for the classic Star ah, Trek. Oh yeah, okay. The classic ones with Shatner and stuff. Alright, alright. Yeah, I sorta of know how it feels like um with the mom watching your videos type of thing. My mom kinda does that too nowadays. <laughs> wow. Shut up, Norman! What? I, I'm sure I have family members who watched my videos too, I think. I'm not 100% sure. I never get any comments by them, but still. But anyway, thanks, Manga, for answering those important questions. And, well, I think we can just hop into it. You said you make videos and stuff, so before I go further, mind telling the people at home who you are and what you do? Yes, my name is Manga Common. I am an analyst, comic book writer in the works, and as well as a little bit of an amateur a animator. My channel is Manga Common, as you can probably guess, and I'm the Rippin' Griffin. Uh, I'm guessing that you're the only Griffin in the fandom, right? As much as I would love that, I guess I'm the only Griffin who actually does, like, analysis, but I could be wrong on that, because... I, mean, I don't really watch a whole bunch of other analysis videos, especially when I'm working on my own for my own videos, because my philosophy is I don't want to be seen as though I'm taking, yeah, I don't have like influence by other people. I don't want to be biased towards the episode because that's the one thing I kind of noticed with like, um, the analysis videos when I was getting into it was that there usually seems to be like a bandwagon effect going on against certain episodes and Frankly, I thought that was kind of unfair to the show because once someone says one bad thing, people keep highlighting that bad thing over again and again. Yeah, that, that's what I went through when I first did my whole shtick. I remember this one episode when some animator friend of mine talked about, oh, the animation in this one was crappy and I got influenced. And when I did my own show thingy, when I talked about it, I didn't really knew what I was talking about because it was from an offhand comment. So, yeah, getting influenced by other people and just jumping on the bandwagon just because other people said so is not a good thing. That and, well, a lot of people in the analysis community tend to share the same opinion. Uh-huh, that is also true. Which can be a bit of a uh, backlash on us because if we share, like, the same opinion, it's, yeah, it's repetitious. And it's just, okay. ugh. There's nothing new. Mm. Yeah, plus, why would you bother go seeing other people if they all share the same opinion as the big guy? I can agree with some things after I posted my video and I watch other people's reviews and I see, oh, I got like a similar opinion, but I don't fully agree with them on the whole thing. Um, I mean, take for example, there was this one guy who 
who did a stream when I watched like the latest episode, Gauntlet of Fire, and he made like a couple of complaints on the episode. I'm not going to say who because I don't want to be, you know, outed myself. One of the major complaints I saw was like Ember taking her helmet off. I mean, what was the point of her even wearing in the first place? That's what the complaint was. And the guy goes on like, why don't any of the dragons go back to tell Dragon Lord Torch about this thing that his daughter's in the competition? And there's like so much wrong with it. I mean, take for example the helmet itself. I mean, if you look at Ember's eyes and the helmet's eye holes, you can tell that she wouldn't have too good peripheral vision in them. So taking off the helmet, especially when you're like in obstacle courses, like things that can come out of the corner of your eye, yeah. Those are minor gripes that don't really affect the whole show in general. So those kind of complaints oh. are kind of not needed. Invalid. Yeah. Because- that one complaint about, like, um, you know, why don't the dragons go after, go tell Torch about, like, his daughter being in the competition? That's, that's not a word! Stupid, because, uh, well, I, yeah. s- I deserve this, sweetie, Bell. I'm sorry. <laughs> Carry I on. thought I was doing well. Anyway, it's stupid you because you're kind of going after the scepter. Mm-hmm. Which can control dragons, including Torch, I'm guessing. Yes, that's... Yes! Yeah. And the t- so what would the point be of going back to tell Torch? That, that would be really stupid. Now, now, this wouldn't have bugged me if it was like a smaller person who was like around my size, because, yeah, I mean, it's just a differing opinion. I think it's stupid, but hey, each to own, right? But no, this guy's got like five digit subs and stuff like that. He's got multiple channels. Mm. And, oh, I know who you're talking about. About. Yeah, like I said, I'm not gonna say who, but you can probably guess who I'm talking about. Yeah, if you, if you know, you know. But still, it's it's one of those cases where he has an opinion, he talks about it. You don't agree, you talk about your opinion. It's it's a matter of opinion to be exact. So that's why you guys do your video. Uh, uh, would you say you were an analyst? So would you really consider yourself an analyst or a reviewer? Neither. Mm. I consider myself an entertainer. Mm. Because while I because while I can do analysis stuff right there, I don't want that to be the focus of my channel because anyone can look at something and say, "Well, look at Vinyl Scratch. She's a white pony with blue and whitish green hair." But that's not what I want my channel to be about. I want my channel to be for my fans. I want them to come to the channel, watch a video, get a smile on their face, and then just be happy. Because, I mean, one of the things that a YouTuber has to consider is their entertainment value and what they want to do with their channel. And this is my own perspective, but when I started YouTube, I'll admit, yeah, I wanted to begin into the reviewer craze, you know, like with, like, Nostalgia Critic... Uh, Linkara and etc. And what I want to do is basically focus on the MLP comics. So basically be the opponent the equivalent to Linkara. <laughs> All right. But I quickly <laughs> found that I really didn't like doing that. I really didn't care about doing like having like all those clips in the place of actual comedy and humor. Uh, if you look at my recent videos, I've really cut back on doing referential humor. Say for like if I do animations, like in my latest one where I parody Sega to Santro's commercial. <laughs> nice. I love that one. I mean, like, yeah. When you do referential humor like that, I think it's good. But when you're just like taking a clip and I'm not saying that's bad for anyone to do that, I don't have the right to complain about that because I still technically do that every once in a while. But I don't use it as the main crutch of my humor or entertainment. Well, it's a style that you develop on your own. So, well... It's your style. Yeah. And I'm glad that people are coming to the channel there, enjoying my content for the most part. As for the reviewer part, yeah, I can do reviews, but that's such a saturated market right now that I prefer to go with the term entertainer because I'll basically make more videos that are meant for entertaining or basically just, like, pointing out stuff that I think is, you know, hypocritical or try to help others improve. So I'm looking at your channel here, and I do see that you also do, well, besides from reviews, you also do some, well, top fives or response to other people. Like, for example, it's the Matt Pat's Cracks uh, video thingy. I, the, what, what, one week ago? 
It's not. It's not a top five. Norman. No, I mean, it's that, just a uh, commentary. I'm just saying. He's probably referring to the Undertale video. Yeah. I wanted. Well, I did want to try my hand at the top five. Like I said earlier, you probably won't see anything MLP related to top fives and stuff like that. But I've seen so many countdowns that I figured, you know what, I might as well try my hand at them and see how it is. But once again, that's a sort of pre-saturated market that's kind of getting, you know, a little bit blah, in my opinion. I don't. I'm not, Saying the countdowns are bad, but there's just so many of them now done by so many people. I mean, it's like the same thing. Like you see, like people do like videos on like video games, Pokemon, manga, anime, that kind of thing. It's a very saturated market, and I mean, it's okay for you to try to break into it. I'm not saying you can't do that, but it's really hard to get that. Hmm. But don't you think anyway, that? If you do, well, let's just say, for example, you do a top five favorite video game of all time, like your personal favorite, wouldn't that, like, introduce people to the things that you like? And that is true. You can do that. But at the same time, like I said, if you go on YouTube and you put, like, top five or top ten list or top list of favorite video games of all time, you will probably get, like, thousands, if not millions of research. Uh, I mean, for your fans, yeah, you can do that. That would be an awesome thing to do, which I might actually do because I do have quite a few games I like. Also, remember, you got to have something that's unique to yourself. You got to stand out from the crowd too. Hmm. True that. True that. I mean, the top fives or top tens or whatever it is, it's redundant, but they do serve a purpose. Yeah, I can see that. But anyway, you were saying about my MatPat video as well? Yeah, that one. Like, I, I did notice that too, and, uh, another one, like, Rupert's arm, armor, and that top eight worst thingy. So, you also do those kind of videos? Gamer. Yeah. Armors, rupees, and, I mean, rupees, armor, and BS. Yeah. So, you also do those kind of videos. So, um, I did see the MatPat one, and, um, you kind of pointed out a few things a, that's... Actually, there's a couple on MatPat, and, once again, this is just my opinion. It's not fact. I gotta state this when he actually had, you know, scientific facts on his side. Mm. <clears throat> Star Fox and G Force and that kind of thing. That was actually a pretty awesome video and had like very good scientific reasoning to it. But standardization, and I'm pretty sure it's not just MatPat because recently tutorial video or something like that on YouTube Academy where he showed that he had, like, a whole team to help him out, who specifically is writing and doing the editing on there, but a lot of his videos nowadays on both game theory and film theory, they don't rely on the facts that are presented in either the game or in real life. He's basically going for more flanderization and spreading misinformation on the same matter as well. Sure, it's on pop culture stuff, too, but at the same time, I really do not like the spread of misinformation, especially on the internet where people can take the whatever you say and then say it's a fact, <laughs> which people have done before concerning like with MatPat's videos. Yeah, they didn't do the research themselves. They just asked that guy to do it. Yeah. <sighs> I did see his videos and it kind of irked me a bit at some points where I just brush it off. But when you pointed it out, like, hmm, okay. That's a big thing that's kind of blaring. Yeah, I mean, like, let's go for the Mad Pat's Crack video I did. <laughs> yeah. While I do try to stay a little bit more respectful in these videos <laughs> where people do other commentaries or responses, in that video, Mad Pat takes so much out of context. He takes so much out of context, like I said, and he also gets so much wrong just as the basis theory on it. And I even had a friend who said, like, the, the fact that MadPat said, Oh, the government supported the drug trade in America! Or those gorillas, or whatever. I had a friend, uh, A&O Dreams specifically, tell me that MadPat was wrong because that wasn't officially supported by the government. Only a few people who were actually, you know, veterans and were actually into the whole thing and actually forged documents for that to go through. Mm. And those guys were actually dishonorably charged. And the document was actually, well, I can't say this fully for myself, was actually discredited as well. Because, you know, dishonorable charge made by people, that kind of thing going on. 
And yet MacPat says this was a government conspiracy set up by the government. I mean, yeah, there are officials who are part of the government, but that doesn't automatically mean it's a government conspiracy. It's just by some idiots or jerks in the white, yeah, some people. It doesn't mean the entire government's there. They just would say it's a government conspiracy, but the other time, no, it's not. Mm. And the one, the one scene, the one scene in his original video where he actually goes, acts condescending to his skeptics and the people who are detractors to him, he patronizes them. I mean, there's that scene with the bulldog, which apparently, I guess, all his detractors are now bulldogs. Well, uh, I can say much because, well, you've proven your case and, well, if, I don't know, he's just big. So, besides that, talking about big, I also see that you do, well, well, I, when I see your videos, you do parodies on them. So, does that get you into trouble with the YouTube bots? Surprisingly, not really. I mean, the videos that I actually do have, like, problems with, like, uh, but the YouTube bots would have to be when I include music, but it's not MLP music. It's not the clips that I use. It's music that I use that, that is actually taken down by Toei <laughs> because one of the things I will happily admit is that the soundtracks that I use for the most time I get from foreign soundtracks and that tends to help out a little bit because I usually have them playing in the background so the bots can't find them. Because the bots, from what I, and this is just my own experience, they don't usually pick up on the foreign music unless it's just like standalone and unedited. I see. So, well, not that much of a problem then. Well, uh, well, luckily for you, I guess that you're not doing any pony music because, well, guess what? Sony has been on a rampage with its um, copyright claims. Well, I yeah. thought they were taking back those claims. Well, yes, and the reason why those things were up is because of um, pony albums coming up on Amazon. Well, I read a couple of articles saying that they also got them. They also got videos who just had clips of the show too. I mean, the characters' voices. It's hard to say that what's going on behind the scenes, but from this whole scenario here, what it tells us is that Sony has been well pushing their ID content to the YouTube filter thingy, if you guys remember what that looks like on the video that YouTube did. So it looks like they put in the MLP soundtrack to their database and said, go look for this. And the worst part is, music or remixes got hit. But luckily for them, Sony has been just taking back those claims and letting them go scot-free. Which sucks if you really think about it, like all those hard works on remixing. Yeah, it is kind of unfair as well, but, and, um, I'm gonna probably get shot in the foot for this, <laughs> but I'm not a huge fan of like remixes of songs and stuff like that. I mean, it's just not what I like. I mean, I like different covers, but I'm not a huge fan of remixes. Well, some remixes are fine, like you're not a fan of the remixings, but some of them do. It depends on the song too. Yeah, it really all depends on the song, who's playing it, and if it's not just a generalized cover of it. I mean, that generalized remix of, like, you put the song, you put, like, the dubstep <laughs> in the background. Because, frankly, that's just kind of lazy in my eyes and doesn't really seem like, well, I mean, ugh. <laughs> uh, it's one man's poison, another man's meat kind of situation. It's not really poison to me. I just don't see the appeal of it. Mm. But still, but still, like I said, like you have your interests, I have my interests. Other people, you know, it's kind of thing. But besides yes. that, do each know? Mm -hmm. But besides that, uh, I do know that we do share an interest, and that is well, the nineties. Yep, grew up on those. Yep, and to be I grew up on late nineties, and again, I was born in late nineties, so. Oh, it's okay, but... I'll leave the extreme boy stuff to you. <laughs> extreme boy stuff. Dude! <laughs> oh, dude. But talking about that, like, I remember talking to you about, well, Power Rangers for some odd reason, or maybe Kamen Rider, or Mask Rider, or however you want to call it. Yeah, it was basically the Power Rangers and stuff like that. And, 
Well, <laughs> we got the, we got a geeking, and well, we we talk about what what our what was our favorite um, rangers are, or what was our favorite riders are. Like that was fun. And looking at your design here, you said that it was inspired by the um, Magic Rider. I forgot the name. Uh, Common uh, Rider Ghost. Well, uh, no. No, actually, it was Wizard. Ah. Uh. Oh. To be more specific, um, in that in that series, there are actually two common writers that have uh, known. That the the one that I took inspiration from was actually Beast. Hence, why you can see like uh, on my Griffin's flank, he's got like uh, the, this mark that has like lion, a bull, a dolphin, a chameleon, and a falcon on it. That's basically the uh, symbol for common writer Beast. And I initially wanted to have like a character that was more well-rounded and could cover other things. Hence why I chose that mark, because it could show, like, versatility. So, has anyone noticed the symbol before? Uh, yeah, quite a few people have. Um, some of the questions are, why does a griffin have a cutie mark? <laughs> and you're... And, yeah, because you painted it. <laughs> well, actually, no. <laughs> there is then... actually a back... There is actually a backstory I'm working on and hopefully animate by maybe the end of summer if I get enough time. All right. Uh, but during your cutie remark video, you you painted it. <laughs> nope, you just saw my grin hold a paintbrush. <laughs> never, but, never actually... but... Yeah! <laughs> we broke her. Everything you put is is a lie. Like, <laughs> you broke her. Yay. <laughs> okay. I'm saying you know you're going to tell me you don't love me. No. <laughs> I'm kidding. Oh. <laughs> uh, but my, uh, my, you were saying? Uh, but yeah, I am actually working on a backstory animation for it. I mean, I hinted at my Griffin's backstory in uh, my review of last season's finale, but I didn't really get too much on it. I've been getting a couple of questions asking me what the heck's going on there. I mean, what's going on? And I figured that, you know, that'd be pretty cool if I got like, if I managed to get like about 2,500 subscribers by the end of summer, then I'll put that as a special for it. That'll be cool. <laughs> At least people will. Wait, wait, wait. 2,100? 2,500. Oh, 2,500. That... I thought. Uh, I was, uh, never mind. <laughs> you broke her again. I was thinking like 20,000, I guess, in my mind. I don't know. I wish I had 20,000. I wish I had <laughs> 10. Uh, but that's besides the point. So, inspiration of your characters from uh, Kamen Rider. So, why a Griffin OC? Why not ponies? Didn't you have a pony OC, but it had a pompadour? Yeah, I did, but... That was basically for a webcomic I was doing, and I really didn't want to use the same design for that for my YouTube channel. So I figured, you know, I might as well go with something a little bit different, something that stands out. And I saw that hardly anyone who was in analysis, especially when it was beginning, had like a griffin. And considering that griffins were like basically introduced in the first season, I was a little confused why, huh, not a lot of analysts using that, so I figured... Why not use a griffin? Yay, it works. You're unique enough to stand out on your own. Yay. Hmm. Well, I'm also unique because I don't use, like, the vectors, and I don't want to pay vector artists to do my griffin OC. I want to go for a more stylized griffin to make him stand out, too. Mm. And that he does. Mm -hmm. Which is now, true. I can understand the appeal of having, like, show art style as well, but almost <sighs> everyone uses it. <laughs> Oh, that is also true. That is and also true. I can understand wanting to have a little bit of conformity and stuff like that, but at the same time, I feel as though it's kind of a little bit... I mean, it's like going back to having the opinion and stuff like that. I mean, if you're looking at one person's OC and they essentially decide from a color swap, gender swap, I mean, what's the point of watching something else if you're going to see the exact same thing on the screen? Well, not exact. I mean, the same thing, though. Yeah, I can, I can understand. It's basically looking at um, the same picture, but with different colors. 
I understand that too. I mean, I will admit I did sort of um pay Golden Fox to make me vectors, like in show style, but that's only so that I don't like um stick out of other people's videos who use mainly show style. Because it sort of bothers me. There was a video that Finn had recently made, like, for his thoughts on, um, Evicted. And he had this ending scene that was coming back in Rift. It would have been... Everybody had their show-styled OC vectors. Except me. And that kind of bothered me. Because I sort of... You know, I stick it like a store thumb. So, while I do do my own vectors, I don't want to stick out like that. So, I'm paying someone else who knows how to do show-style vectors to make them. That's my reasoning for having show-style vectors at all. Well, it's cool to each their own. Well, I would, I would do that too, but my character already stands out on the basis of him having cat parts. <laughs> that is also true. <laughs> so, I mean, why not? I mean, you got Silverquill, who's got like a bird head going on, he stands out, but if you look at his rump, he's got nothing more than hooves going on back there. <laughs> so true. Uh, yeah, this would be a good conversation. <laughs> yeah. It's a fun conversation. Yeah, it's gonna be cool. Uh, is he gonna listen to this? Right. I hope so. Mm -hmm. If not, i make sure he will listen. <laughs> I'll make sure he gets the message. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but still, um, it's one of those cases where uh, being unique is not a bad thing. And being a Griffin OC, well, it stands out, really. Just looking on EQD, like, huh, this is new. I've never seen this before. And I basically do all my art for this channel and stuff like that. Um, aside from, like, a couple of... Hat, like a couple of textures for like grounded stuff like that, and uh, my current background, which uh, which was actually made by a good friend of mine, and I appreciate him doing that. Very Silvermane, but uh, most of the art that you see on the channel I do myself, including the animations. And talking about animations, and I think I skipped a few steps before that. Is what do you use to create your work? Photoshop and Paint Tool Sci. Mm, and animation. Photoshop and Paint Tool Sci. <laughs> So all of them, eh? Okay. I basically do flipbook animation. It takes a while, but when you got like a, you got opposable sprites and stuff going on, it's really easy. It just takes a little bit of time, but I think it works out for the best part for the most part. I also do like f frame by frame flipbook animation because I made this with that type of um, you know. <laughs> Safi can fly for once, yay! yay. Animation frames. <laughs> but still, that's cool. So, what do you use to edit videos then? I actually have a pretty good program. I got, it's not really, it's not Movies Widowmaker, but it's nothing really expensive. It's called Magic Movie Edit Pro, uh, 2013 edition. I managed to get it for a really good price. It has like good presets. It allows me to do green screen effects too, so. For 50 bucks, that's actually a pretty good deal. Hmm. Oh, okay. So what was it called again? Magic? Uh, Magic Movie Pro. Magic Movie Pro. Okay, I'll go, I gotta check it out because I've been looking for a video editor besides Windows Movie Maker. You mentioned you do your own art and, well, I'm looking here that you also have a Divine Art and, well, most of your art here are really good. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm currently in college trying to become a sequential artist. Sequential artist. Um, what does it do? Basically storyboarding, mm. comic books, that kind of thing. So you're interested in getting into the industry then? Yeah, I actually am. I'm hoping to start my own thing going on because, frankly, it's hard to break out into the pro world trying to get in with everyone else in co <clears throat> because of competition and all that, you know? Mm. Well, it's not easy to get into the industry. It takes a lot of time and context just to, well, try and get in. Yeah, it's basically not what you know, it's who you know and who's seen your work. Yes, that is also true. I did remember talking to Heather once, um, Heather Breckel from the MLP comic, uh, our colorist, and she told me that, well, she just went to a con and showed her work to the editor-in-chief, and bada bing bada boom, she's in. I should do that sometime. If it works, it works. I'm, I'm not 100% sure if it works for everyone, but it's one way to, well, just try and get in, go to a comic con, and 
show your work. And talking about conventions, um, have you been to any convention? Well, yeah, I actually have. Um, last year, I attended my first Brony convention, Super Speedy CiderCon. Ah, as a panelist. Oh, wait a minute. So, have you ever been to conventions? Didn't his backstory of how he became a Brony revolve around going to a convention? Yes, but that's uh, an anime <laughs> con, not a uh, not a Brony con. <laughs> Big difference. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought I'd ask anyway. Uh, you. Thanks for spoiling the story. Uh, anyway, manga. Oh. But, but it was at the beginning. Yeah, I know. Of the podcast. I know. I'm going to shut up now. Shut up. Yeah. But anyways. I don't exist. Su- super speedy cider con, eh? How was that? It was, um, it was pretty good. It was a small convention, but, uh, yeah, it was a pretty good one. They had like, uh, balloon animal versions of ponies. They had like a balloon animal artist there. And he made like, uh, giant versions of the mascots and also a flim and flam. <laughs> uh, that's gotta be fun. Anybody recognize you or were you, well, incognito in disguise? Well, I don't normally show my face on my channel because I like to have my privacy. I mean, I had my name tag written out saying Manga Common, but I highly doubt anyone would remember me. I mean, back then I didn't even have, like, half of the subs I have now. But still, people did recognize you, yes, no? No. Well, at least you can enjoy the con. Yeah. <laughs> so, any heading to any cons now? I am planning on BronyCon. <laughs> oh. With me. Yeah, with her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. Uh. All right, so that's good. It's not like that. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, Shut up! Okay. But, so you're going to RoniCon. So, well, that's gotta be an experience. First time? Yeah, first time. Gonna be driving there, so there's 11 hours I'm gonna have to deal with. <laughs> uh, good luck, my friend. Good luck, my friend. I wish I could have joined, but, uh, money. That is something I don't have. But talking about people who have money, Hasbro! It looks like they have uh, patterned out the name Hascon. <laughs> uh, and from what it seems, right, and from what I see here, it's some kind of convention that Hasbro's doing, something related with their IPs, like, uh, what do you call this, um, Transformers and whatnot. And it seems like they're doing this just because they want to start their own convention. <laughs> so that's going to be cool. I'm kind of worried about what's going to happen. I mean, I mean, I think it might work, but at the same time, you're not really sure what could happen. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, it seems to be really interesting. And I don't know. I mean, like, I need to really understand the whole thing. But from what I understand, it's uh the trademark describes has gone for the use of organizing conventions, exhibitions, fan clubs, and more. So this could be a good thing, probably. I, I don't know. Maybe it could help the MLP fandom with its cons for places that don't really or can't really do a full-fledged con. We'll see. I mean, I mean, we gotta see what's going on first. I mean, there's not. I mean, is there a whole lot of information about going on what they're gonna be doing or? Not much. This is just well, the pattern really, just the name. Other than that, there's nothing really. It would be interesting if they do work together with. Some conventions like, um, let's go for, um, uh, Transformer Con, or what was it called again? I forgot. But that they dedicate the Transformer Convention. If they work with them just to, well, build up a convention, that'll be interesting. Or let's just say BronyCon. That'll be even more interesting to see what they do together. But other than that, um, I got no idea. But this will be interesting. I, I want to hear more from the future for this. I'm sure we'll hear some stuff, maybe even get like a promotion on the channel or whatever. Yeah, probably. Like, <laughs> we'll just have to stick to the new sites. It's all there. I do see here that you also play games, like uh, Undertale is one of the biggest ones here, and I do see that you also like Phoenix Wright. Yes, I do. What other games do you play or like and enjoy? Mm, I like using... I am more of a PC, but I also enjoy good console games too. Uh, because I think that, unlike a lot of people who say on the PC, I think consoles have, like, better titles. I mean, yeah, PC's got a whole bunch of good games and stuff on there, but they also got a bunch of games that are, you know, 
not as great. Some quite a few are scams, and that gets a lot more through on PC than it does on consoles. I'm not here for a PC Master Race <laughs> debate, but <laughs> yeah, PC Master Race. <laughs> uh, P- uh, PC is yeah. PC is good. Hey, didn't you um? Didn't you try to play uh, Team Rocket Nuzlocke at some point? Yes, I am into Pokemon, and I've actually done quite a few response videos on that. Okay, well, what, what is this Team Rocket Nuzlocke? I heard of Nuzlocke, but Team Rocket Nuzlocke, what's that? It's essentially like um, it's essentially like a Nuzlocke, but basically, the game is that you're supposed to like have your own story where you're actually a Rocket Grunt, and you can only use certain types of Pokemon, like Ground, Poison, Normal. I'd say for your starter as well, but. I actually did a randomizer too on that, so I got myself a rock starter. So I said, yeah, that counts. <laughs> yeah, I started doing that, but that was way back. And I also tried doing a Let's Play of Metal Gear Solid, but that got a copyright strike on it, so I said, nope, not gonna deal with that headache. Yeah, how, how? <laughs> Music again. Oh, that's not fair. Ah, oh, meanies. But still, like, MGS is one of those classics that eh, people should play. Yeah, it is. So, other than that, uh, what games are you playing now? Well, I'm a little bit busy with schoolwork, so I can't get a lot of gaming in, but I am a huge fan of the Castlevania series. Hmm, Castlevania is a good one. Um, You know that the creator of Castlevania is creating a new game? Yeah, I know. He actually set up a, pay- he actually set up a Kickstarter and... Managed to get himself like a really big following just on concept art alone. <laughs> yeah, people are really hyped for that one. What was it called again? I forgot. Blood something. something with... Yeah, I can't remember the name of it right now because I don't normally follow Kickstarter things going on. Yeah, I, I wish I push in money, but I push in money on the other project, Mighty Number no. Nine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You didn't do that now, did you? Oh no, I, I want to. I, I'm in support of that game, but the thing is, like, he's just taking his sweet time. Mm. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, besides my Kickstarter failures, uh, uh, Castlevania, other than that, like, um, any other games that you're interested in? Well, like I said, I'm into a whole of left round. I don't normally go for, like, just one game at a time and play it. I usually get a couple. I'm into the, like I said, I'm into Pokemon. I am into like a whole bunch of 3DS games and also really niche titles such as like, uh, Ghost Trick, uh, Danganronpa. Ah, yes. It's... So do you have a Vita then? Yeah, I actually do. I mean, it's, uh, I mean, I like the Vita. It's a pretty good thing and it's a really underrated system. It kind of makes me sad that people are saying, oh, the Vita's dead, the Vita's dead. I mean, I can understand them saying that because there's not a whole plethora of games, but at the same time, there are more games coming out for it, and it is actually a pretty good system. Yeah, I mean, to me, I don't find it interesting because there's no games for me on it, but I'm sure, like you and others, there's games for them. I mean, you can actually get, like, PS1 games on the go for this, and that's actually pretty good, even a couple of PS2 games, too. Mm, true that, true that. And the PSN Plus thingy, where you get a free game every month, that's good. As like I said, it depends yeah. on the person using it. As for me, I stick to my 3DS and other console gamings. Yeah, I basically go for more handheld gaming myself, really, because I'm always on the go and I don't really have a whole lot of time to basically, you know, set up my PC or set up a console to play. Yeah, even though it's just a push of a button away. <laughs> so you mentioned Pokemon a few times. So the new Pokemon, Sun and Moon, coming out. Where's your loyalty? Celestia Luna. Uh, neither. I'm not a fan of the whole princess thing going on. <laughs> Say for Princess Ember, but, um, but, uh, since, yeah, but since we are on Sun and Moon, one thing that I really, really can't stand that's going on right now on YouTube with all these Poketubers is all their predictions. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, all right. They are based on nothing. I even saw a video from a really high Poketuber. Uh, I think his name is uh, Versify or something like that. Mm. Versify. I know who you're talking about, yeah. Yeah, he made the claim that Ho-Oh and Lugia are going to be the new legends, uh, legendaries of Sun and Moon. Wait, but ain't they already in Gold and Silver? 
Yeah. Yeah. And there was this other guy called Tyranitar Tube who said that Zygarde's 100% complete form was going to be one of the new legendaries. Maybe? I yeah, really don't... I could see that. No, no. They're saying, like, they're going to be the cover art. No. Oh. Yeah, no. I mean, here's the thing. From what I know of Nintendo, or basically um, the Pokemon company, is that... When they create something, well, when they create a new title, it's going to be a new Pokemon, plus add in another hundred few more new ones. I mean, they kind of kept this formula going for about 20 years, and since this is the 20th anniversary, it'd be like a real cop-out if they did that. Yeah, I mean, come on. And then you got these guys, I mean, like, we got actually information about a leak about, like, the names of them, and they act like nothing happens, or they say, huh. I guess I was wrong, and yet they'll go into their comments sections on the previous videos and say, like, everyone else is wrong, and act like, oh, I guess I was wrong, but not really. I can understand the new information coming out, but they act like they're these Pokemon experts, and when people bring up good points against them, I mean, once again, take, like, Versify as well. He said that Lugia was the Lord of the Seas, and Kyogre wasn't. And yet, if you look like if you look at the Pokédex entry, it said that Kyogre actually made the seas in the Pokémon world. And at this point, if Silver Quill was actually in the conversation, he'd probably go, "I'm so old." <laughs> I, yeah, he would say that. Knowing him, he probably would, because nothing, nothing makes him feel old. Then Gen than two to Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, like I, I'm editing that he one right now. He said something like yeah. that last week. Yeah, I'm editing that right now, and yeah, he did say that. Yeah, I actually uh, remember that crossover Toon Critic on Rainbow Falls. But that's besides the point. And we're talking about another bird face person, not this one. So anyway, Manga, um, is there anything that we're missing here? Because I'm sure I'm missing out on something. Did you want to ask me different questions as well? I mean, I'm more up for that. I mean, the point where we could always talk about a specific topic on a later date for another show, like the MBS show discussion, where we could just talk about, well said topic that you mentioned earlier before. Something about Princess Luna, something like that? Oh yeah, and the uh, Voice of Reason. Yeah, something like that. We could do a dedicated episode on that one. But hey, uh, more people with Silver probably on. Will be, it will be a much better conversation piece. Yeah, because it also kind of concerns Silver too, because Voice of Reason was talking about his crossover with Silver Quill. And as I stated before, I am not really a fan of the princess, say for the scale kind, but I felt like a couple of his arguments are still kind of flawed on that mark too. But I don't want to be like disrespectful because, you know, opinions and stuff like that, and no one likes to have their opinion challenged because we all have our egos. <laughs> that is also true. And talking about princesses, you mentioned this a few times already. Why why don't you like the equestrian princesses? Well, I guess I can get into that. Let's start with. Princess Celestia. One, she's practically useless. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. How I mean, dare you, at, you? I mean, if you look at Chrysalis, I mean, she got taken down by a bug. Um, then here's her plan to deal with Tyrion. Let's send Discord! <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's basically the lack of foresight and how Equestria hasn't fallen in the last 2,000 years or so is a mystery to me under her rule. <laughs> I guess none of the bad guys are, like, on vacation or something like that, or, like, man, we'll just wait for the elements to come back, then we'll all come in droves. <laughs> all right. So, well, there's one uh, glaring flaw for her. For Luna, for Luna, I wouldn't say she's overrated, because, frankly, that's not really her fault, and... Frankly, she does deserve some of the credit because she does have a good design for the most part, and she is actually portraying her character for the most part, in my opinion, pretty well. I mean, I can actually relate to her a little bit better than basically any of the other princesses, but frankly, it's just like, I don't, while I see the appeal, it's just not to my tastes. I don't know how to really explain why I don't really care for her, but yeah. All right, no problem. Cadence, on the other hand. <laughs> Worst oh. princess ever. Well, yeah, I mean, she basically caused the entire the entire thing to go down in a 
the season opener of the Crystal Inc. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I mean, people like to say, oh, Flurry hurts them who broke the Crystal Heart. And I'm thinking, yeah, but she's a baby. You know what happens if you take a baby away from someone who's giving it attention and rip them away from it <laughs> like that? They will cry. <laughs> and considering that we saw, like, you know, that a sneeze can cause an entire energy beam to come out of nowhere <laughs> and destroy a part of the castle, I would think that maybe, just maybe, you would take a little more precaution to not upset the little critter. That sounds like a scene plan. Yeah, it's also not a good motherly tactic as well. I mean, you've seen, like, people who usually have, like, carry babies. They don't just, like, well, here you go. I'll throw the baby to you. <laughs> no, no, no. You actually have to give, like, you actually have to transport the baby through arm to arm and keep up the human contact because... Things thrive on that contact. It gives them attention. It keeps them warm. They know that there's someone there to protect them because of their natural instinct. Babies will cry if you're not paying attention to them. That's because they are, that's because of their natural instinct as well. And that's something that a mother should know, or at least if you were, I mean, I'm guessing parenthood lessons don't really exist in Equestria for that. Well, she is kind of a new mother, so mistakes are yeah, to I mean, she's had like months. I mean, she wasn't showing when they made the announcement that she was pregnant. They had time to take classes. I, and I got no defense for this one, man. Like I, I don't know what to say. All but, we can yeah, say is that Cadence is worst princess. <laughs> what about Twilight? I wasn't a huge fan of her becoming a princess. I could see where it was going, but to me it felt like it was happening a little bit too early. I had no problem with her becoming, getting those wings and stuff like that, but at the same time, there were still plenty of stories you could have done with, like, her being a unicorn and stuff like that. Not to mention that she's, while she, yeah, she has gotten, the writers and the an, the animators have actually suddenly changed her design to make her a little bit taller than the main six and such, but there's not really much of a change other than the two wings that she gets. Is this a start with the wings and her attitude is changing slowly? Yeah, but like I said, I mean, when I think like, I mean, when you think like princess, you think tall, regal, and stuff like that. Mm. Which is something that most of the other princesses do have, with Cadence being like, before Twilight got her wings, the shortest. I mean, Cadence is probably like, what, a few years older than Twilight, I'm guessing? I mean, I'm, probably. they don't really tell us age. Yeah, stuff like probably, that. probably. But still, um, Twilight, Princess Twilight being the new princess in town, she's, well, Bring her wolf in season six. We'll see more. I'm guessing we'll see more. But what I also really don't care is how, and this is probably this is really unfair to her and stuff like that, is that people say that Twilight's development is done and now she's becoming a teacher. I'm like thinking, just because you become a teacher, that doesn't mean you don't learn and stop learning. They even say it in the episode where she's learning something new every day. Yeah. We've been recording for an hour now, and wow, I just want to talk more, but uh, editing is going to kill me. We got next week, though. Yeah. Uh, Pardon? Nothing. <laughs> Thank you for coming on, Manga, and it was great to have you on. I hope you do come on again. I hope so, too. It was a really fun time. <laughs> Yay. And sorry for the derps in call quality or just me in general, because I am not feeling well. It's been almost a week since I last recorded. Well, James is still out. We could have him on again. Yeah, true. We'll see what he we'll see what he can do because he's a bit busy with well life. life. Curse you, life! Curse you, Xerneas! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and before we move on, um, we we got email this week, so yay, awesome! Uh, Seppi, you want to cover this one? Oh boy! All right, I'll I'll take care of it. Dear MBS show co-host. I have been quietly listening to this thing you have called a podcast and have enjoyed listening to it. The guests you've had on and the emails that my mom has sent you, she doesn't let me read them before she sends them. Sad face. I thought it was time to start writing to you. I've been lurking in the dark and have something to say to all of you. Norman, questions. Have you ever been outside your country? Hmm. Yes, I have. And can James Quirk appear on an episode soon? I miss him. Is it possible to get another awesome guest on your show? Have an idea to who you can get. Well, you got Manga here. Yeah. He's awesome. Manga, you be on the next week. Next couple yes. weeks. 
Yes. But um, to answer your first question, yes, I have been outside of my own country. I've been, well, uh, funny enough, um, England for a convention. Uh, that was Buck. So yeah, th- th- that's how far I went. Um, for James, yeah, well, he's currently busy with his commission queues and whatnot. Uh, once he's done or once he's free, he'll pop in. And as for guests, we got manga. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> All right. And a suggestion. In my time listening, I've noticed that one episode is about a half an hour long, or they stay within a pony land here. They do become more enjoyable, just not to me, but everyone. Just, just a thought, but anyway, you do it. I will always have a smile across my face. I really like I really think you're an awesome dude, and you deserve every good and uh. pony thing that comes your way. Okay, this was a question for Kyle. Like, in your story, how you became a brony, you said there was a girl that you were trying to impress. If she wasn't with anyone, would you have the guts to ask her out? And the second, do you have the first ever Super Mario Bros. game in your game collection? That's my all-time favorite. My mom tells me she wants to write, and I heard you're a writer, so is there any little tips you would give for her? What my mom said about you is right. You do deserve a cuddly wife. <laughs> oh, this is yeah, sweet. So, hey, you. you. Um, funny enough, um, Kyle's not here because, well, he's busy with life. Life gets in the way. Mean life. But he did send a reply, and he wrote, Hey, CRC Brony. Thanks for the great question. They really brightened up my day. Yes, it's true. I did accidentally become a brony because of trying to impress a girl who was into the show and still is. She is single, but we are good friends now and I doubt we work out as a couple. I'm usually extremely nervous when it comes to asking people out and basically am completely derp. Although somehow I now have a very nice pony in my life that's very adept at cuddling me and make me very happy. I don't have the original Super Mario Bros. game, actually, which was on the NES, as I don't have the console. However, I do have Super Mario All-Star on SNES, which includes the first three Mario games on it, and that's mm, and that is a great collection of games to have. It also comes with the unreleased Super Mario Bros. 2, known as The Lost Level, which never came to the West, so highly recommend picking up if you see it online. I think there's on the Nintendo eStore. Anyway, uh, I do try and be a writer. I sometimes stream on Picardo under my name, Minascribe, if you want to see me do that. It's great to hear that your mom wants to write. Tell her I wish her good luck in creating new words. The first tip I'd give is to always try and write as much as you can, even if it's just a few words here or there. Getting used to writing and getting into the mindset and doing it regularly is the first challenge. So find some small pocket of time where you have some time for yourself. Open a word doc and just start typing. Sevi, why don't you take over for this? Because my throat is killing me already. Okay, I know you have a sore throat, so I'll read it. Also, don't worry about writing huge stories. Something really small but concise will be good for both time and wise and getting used to the pattern of writing stories, intro, conflict, resolution. This can be less than a couple hundred words that, and doesn't have to be deep. But if you try and make a very short story with those three sections, you'll begin to get used to writing narrative, and you can build length from there. Oh, and just a wee fun fact, the shortest story is just six words long. For sale, baby shoes. Never worn. Take care and let me know how your mom's writing goes. But yeah, um, so there's your answer, CRC for Kyle's, and well... I hope it helps. And going on live, I'm dying. <laughs> well, maybe we should end off the show. Oh, yeah. Yes, indeed. Uh, 
Yeah, and also, Hiro, thank you for answering all of my silly questions to you all. I hope you have an awesome week. Yeah, I, I'm trying to. <laughs> I'm not dying. <laughs> Uh, P.S. I was wondering when you would find my iTunes comment. I posted that months before I sent the first email. Uh, well, I did find it. But anyway, um, uh, thank you, CRC, for sending the email. And I do hope when you write next time, you do something for Sappy because she deserves the love too. Okay. But anyway, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at com. You can also catch us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at MBS Show. Sudibot will tweet about this show, retweet it, and also interact with you. You can also catch me at Roman Sanzo. I tweet about toys, food, and whatever tickles my fancy. And tickling my fancy is I want to get well. <laughs> Sophie, where can I catch you? Well, you can find me on DeviantArt, Twitter, and... YouTube by typing in Anime Christie, I'm sure you'll find me. You can also look me up on my Facebook page where you can look up Sapphire Heart Song, which is my pony character because pony reasons and ponies and oh my and manga. Our special special manga. guest, where where can we find you? You can find me on the channel of Manga Common on YouTube. You can also find me on Twitter at Manga Common. And you can find me on DeviantArts as Flare Knights, F-L-A-I-R-N-I-G-H-T-Z. Yay, awesome. And also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio. And also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyForLife.com. Links are in the show notes. So I have been Norman Sanzo. I've been Sapphire Heartsong. And I am Manga Common. And remember, my friends, to examine your fandom. Good tip, good tip, and we'll guys catch you next week with another amazing episode of the MBS show. See you later. Bye. Bye bye.